Hey everyone at Anime Expo Light. Um, this is Dara Stagio, and we're here to talk about East meets West and getting into the anime industry as a foreigner. My name is uh, Henry Thurlow, and I'm the director here at Dara Stagio. Hey, my name is Arthel Isom, the CEO of Dara Stagio and art director. Um, I guess we're going to kind of like, well, well, yeah, first, thank you for joining us, and we really appreciate it, like always, like we just. Um, the, the love that you guys have been showing us is amazing and so this is our second time kind of coming to for the Anime Expos event I think the first time was uh, I don't know maybe three four years ago huh for XO we prepared XO there uh, XO Genesis that's yeah, right yeah and that was at the Anime Expo so then this will be our second time uh, so really quick introduction if you don't know us at all mm -hmm. uh, and we'll have no idea who's even talking right now uh, yeah. Arthel and I are both uh, Americans who moved to Japan a whole bunch of years back now both mm -hmm. both of us over 10 years at this point um, and we cracked into the anime industry and have been working on a whole bunch of big famous anime franchises uh, for a while since then and then yeah. a few years back we started this studio De Stagio and uh, uh, on top of you know still working on the big anime projects we also produce our own stuff so that's who we are and mm -hmm. now maybe we'll go into a little bit more detail all right yeah so how did we get out here so just really quick about myself like uh so like henry said i've been out here now for 15 years and i um i came out here first initially just to paint backgrounds i had a real big interest in Ghost in the Shell, that was the first anime that I had ever seen that really just got me wanting to be in the anime. So I saw Ghost in the Shell, and I decided that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move to Japan and work for the art director of Ghost in the Shell. His name is Ogura, Hiromasa Ogura-san. And I came out here, got a job with him, or under, underneath him at his studio, and then, yeah, that's that. A uh, quick version of my story is that uh, I've always been into art. Uh, first animation that I really loved was actually, uh, arguably not anime, the uh, HBO Spawn series from back in the 90s, if anyone's familiar with that. Um, but after that, I quickly realized there's nothing like that. Uh, America doesn't really produce adult animation, but Japan does. Mm -hmm. So I quickly got into anime, uh, watched all those you know, OVAs that old uh, blockbuster videos and easy mm -hmm. videos had. Uh, Curse of the Undead, Yoma, and Genocyber, and things like that. Um, and then I've just been an anime fan since. I worked in New York as an animator on like Cartoon Network show like uh, Super Jail. Um, but at the end of the day, my passion was uh, anime, and so I moved out to Japan. Uh, started at the bottom as an in-between animator uh, at a studio called Nakamura Pro, and then moved to Studio Piero, the production studio behind like uh, Naruto and Yu Yu Hakusho and uh, Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, and then, yeah, and then I've worked as like a, a freelance key animator here and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and I've been here for, I guess, 11 years now. Okay. And so now we're going to talk about something that's actually kind of both, that's important to both of us, like schooling. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a lot of different, like, you know, opinions and ideas about is schooling important, is it not important. Obviously, both of us graduated from uh, college. That's actually the only way you can actually get a job in Japan is you have to have a college degree. So if you are, if you are planning to go work in any foreign country, you have to have a college degree. So we just talk a little bit about schooling. Um, I went to the Academy of Arts University in San Francisco. My major was, um, oh, what was my major? I don't even know what my major was, I forgot. It was like, uh, I think it was animation and fine. So I got a bachelor in fine arts. And, um, and then after I graduated from there, I came to Japan and I went to Yoyogi Anime Gakuen, which is a, another a technical school here in Osaka. And I studied, and my major was uh, also, again, animation, but more of a focus on a background painting for animation. I went to, uh, I'm from New York, but I went to uh, the Delaware College of Art and Design to get an associate's degree in, uh, I guess, animation, or, or maybe it was just associates in fine arts or something. Uh, and then I went to Pratt Institute uh, to get the bachelor's in animation. Um, and yeah, schooling, schooling... I, I think is important. I think Arthel and I both feel it's important. We've had a lot of discussions about mm -hmm. that. Uh, recently, I think, uh, with, you know, uh, online be mm -hmm. becoming a thing, you know, yeah, social yeah. media becoming a thing, uh, some people can, can jump into their field by just self-advertising their own stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, schooling can be important. And if you do want to not just freelance for the Japanese anime industry, but actually work in Japan, as a foreigner, as Arthel said, you will definitely need those degrees. That's yeah. that's important towards getting your visa to work in a foreign country. Yeah. And 
So I guess let's just talk about visa first. Like mm. since since Henry brought it up, I think that's kind of a good segue into the next part that we're going to talk mm. about. But like, yeah, because a lot of you are kind of watching this panel because you want to work out here, right? You want to work in the anime industry. Or hopefully, you want to work for their Stagio. But if not, right, there's a ton of other amazing studios out here, and that you want to work for, right? You've been you're fans of them. And it's like, how do I get to Japan? So, visa for not only Japan, the, the only way foreigners can travel between countries is you have to have a visa. And there are all different types of visas. And so it's like, what kind, if you have a student visa, for example, you can't work in the industry with a student visa because that is illegal. Nor can you if you have a teaching visa, which is the mm -hmm. visa that I think Arthur and I both came over, or at least I came over on a <laughs> yeah. teaching visa mm -hmm. originally. Um, but at that point, I couldn't get into the anime industry. Yeah, so there was more maneuvering through the visa system. To be yeah. honest, we can rant about this for a long time, which we don't have time for right yeah. now. Um, <laughs> so get, getting a visa in any country, uh, it's, it's a challenge in and of itself. But uh, do your own research about what is necessary for obtaining the type mm -hmm. of visa you want. Uh, and if the Japanese anime industry is a place you want to work, Yes, a degree in uh, your field, your art field, is, is necessary. That is key. And then just really quick about visas, like, yeah, you can't, you can't work in the field with a teaching visa, like a teaching visa, but you can, there, so there are two types of visas. One is where you're teaching, where you're specifically a teacher, like, and then that's all you can do. You can work at public schools. The second type is a humanities visa, which is the way that I came to Japan. So I came on a humanities visa. The humanities visa allows you to actually work in any field, essentially. I mean, there are certain fields that you can't work in. There, there, is re there are regulations, but it is very broad and you're allowed to kind of have more choice of where you're going to work. So mm -hmm. try to apply for a humanities visa. And even that can, requires the, the degree. Though. Yeah, you still have to have a degree, mm -hmm. yes. But it gives you freedom of where you can work and what you can do. And you can, even with a, with a humanities visa, you can go to school with a humanities visa, which is actually pretty good. So I was allowed, I could go to school and I can work. Moving along since we got a lot to cover. Yeah. Learning Japanese. Um, how important is it to know Japanese to work in the Japanese anime industry, Arthel? <laughs> if you're, if you're going to live out here, and, <laughs> if you're going to live in another country, you should definitely know that country's language. And, you know, yeah. because that's only, not only because it's necessary, but just be, because it's, it's also good for yourself. Like, if you don't want to feel like an outsider, if you want to get to know the culture, if you want to get, if you want to make friends, Right. So you need to be able to communicate with these people like when you're not working or outside ordering a coffee or anything. So just it, it's, it is very necessary. Yeah. If you're going to work in the industry, I mean, I, to crack into the industry, uh, you know, t times change very quickly. So now might be a little bit different than when we cracked in mm -hmm. even even just a handful of years ago. But um uh, we had to interview fully in Japanese. You have mm -hmm. to sit down, interview in Japanese, make your case that you're the person for the yeah, job yeah. in Japanese. So mm -hmm. obviously knowing the language is just an absolute base thing that yeah, you need. Yeah. Uh, one other point, though, that you, you touched on, uh, you know, not knowing the language, let's even get over, let's say you get the job without mm -hmm. knowing Japanese somehow. You, yeah. you, you get an have, amazing portfolio. Yeah, you have an amazing portfolio and you happen to go to a, a place where there's some English speakers so yeah. they, could, they could help you out. Um, not knowing the language, uh, you won't know the full context of what the characters are saying that you're mm -hmm. asked to animate. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, or, or if you're painting backgrounds, um, what, if there's, what if it's a famous place with all these specific kanji that mm -hmm. are, are in the background? You know, if you don't know the language, you won't know the nuance, the nuances of even what it is you're making. Yeah, so yeah. obviously, yes, knowing the language and culture of mm -hmm. the the projects that you're making, I think is important. Yeah, one more point really quick about kind of based off of jumping off of what Henry said, particularly with Japanese animation, their animation is really nuanced. Like culture is just like just oozing throughout all their anime. And without being able to communicate and understand that culture, you can't even put it, you wouldn't even understand why they're asking you to put something into the anime. So definitely language is important. That way you can kind of, you know, you can discuss things and then your, your coworkers will tell you, oh, this is the reason why this is there because when we were kids, we blah, 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 blah. But yeah, that's that. All right, so, uh, well, actually, let's just jump to this one, uh, cultural differences, okay. because that kind of links with, uh, so what are some of the cultural differences that you might not notice if you don't mm -hmm. know the language, for example? Yeah, like cultural differences, I mean, there's a lot, right? Like when you come out here, talk about just preparing yourself to have a culture shock. Like besides, let's skip language. Of course, food, 
and food is really different. Specifically as it pertains to the workplace. Okay, and then we'll stick to work. Um, I think that the Japanese method of working is very different. So the Western, I mean, you have more experience with this because I've actually never worked in the animation industry in, in the West. I only worked in the, in the industry in, in Japan. So I wouldn't be able to tell you what's different in America specifically, but maybe you <laughs> Well, it's funny. Uh, yeah, so uh, Arthel and, and even a few other uh, American workers here uh, mm -hmm. have only worked in Japan. So they have yeah. this work ethic from Japan all through and through. Um, for me, uh, yeah, I worked in uh, the New York uh, animation industry for a while. And, uh, I mean, even that is, you know, it's a tough job, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to work really hard and sometimes the deadlines are crazy and you have to pull all-nighters there too, right? Like it just, it, it happens. So um, I, I think uh, the Japanese animation industry and maybe Asian industries kind of get a bad rap for, you know, oh my uh, God, yeah. they, they have such hard work schedules. I think everywhere uh, artists work really, really hard. Yeah. Um, that be takes time. That being said, uh, the especially for the newer workers or the people in in between animation people in backgrounds people in just key animation especially for those workers doing a lot of the grunt work of, yeah. of the show which requires hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sequences um it is really morning until night just you yeah. are non-stop working i did think of one very specific thing because that like you said like time really isn't really like that that kind of jumps that jumps borders right and but there is one thing that is very culturally different that mm -hmm. i just thought of and that is um your your ability to kind of inject your pain and into your artwork i think that's kind of different like in in america like westerners we like we pride ourselves on being different and we pride ourselves on like look how amazing i can do this because it, this is me and then you want your artwork to reflect yourself whereas i feel like in asia like or in particularly Japan, it's a, it's a team effort, and the work that you're doing is supposed is supposed to represent everyone, mm. not not your opinion, not like not you as an individual. So all of the work that you do should be something that as soon as if they take it off your table and you pass it to the next person, you wouldn't even know that you drew it because it looks just the same as this person. And in, in every in your processes as well. So and that's something I've now really started to notice what well, it's interesting uh as you're saying that i'm uh, you know I'm, I'm thinking about that kind of for the first time i think mm -hmm. that doesn't apply o o it, it almost is the exact opposite for directors and maybe certain specific famous super animators yeah, yeah. but i think that maybe people get the wrong idea when they see those people yeah. oh because that famous director gets to put their style into everything they do, oh, the freedom in Japan. Yeah. And similarly, that super animator, I can tell exactly when that specific super famous person pops up in random shows. Yeah. Those are really the exception to the rule. Uh, usually, and again, especially when you're doing in-betweens or, or, or lower down, it, yeah, that really isn't the case. You really must just work really hard to accomplish what it is that the team is trying to accomplish. When I worked in New York, uh, I could... I could throw little things into the sequences, yeah. little Easter eggs and stuff, because I had freedom to manipulate the sequences as as I kind of felt they would mm -hmm. become my sequences. Not so much the case in the anime industry. It, it, it's it, it's going to go through so many people, so many corrections, so many changes. Mm -hmm. So much of the team is going to see it, put their yeah. own you know uh, work into it. That uh, yeah, it, I, I don't get to put my own little unique Easter eggs in it. it, it you, what you are making is what the team has decided to make. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, there's that. And... So getting the job, you know, there's a lot of probably, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of anime fans watching right now, but there's probably also a lot of artists yeah. that are like, oh man, these guys actually got to Japan and, and are working on the types of projects that we hope to work on, right? Mm -hmm. So specifically, like, if we're talking to the artists out there, right, who are like, oh, maybe I'll hear a, a tidbit of, you know, advice, influence, information, yeah. something that can help me accomplish what, you know, these guys have accomplished. Uh, what do you have for them? Uh, explain the process of kind of getting this this job. Okay. Well, so, all right. So, like, of course, I sit and have interviews with people and I hire people. And now I'm not saying that all bosses are all managers and not even for each department. Are gonna, they're going to be looking for different things. But there are general qualities that I can say you should have when you're trying to get a job. And this most likely will apply anywhere. Um, of course, technical skill. De definitely have technical skill. Like, And that's something that we get 
like even though that seems like a common sense answer <laughs> like mm-hmm. like you know you think that like of course i'm gonna be good right but that but i think not good in your eyes you know like the, like what i mean by technical skill is that when you that you you check off all the boxes that that is required of, of the, the the department that you're trying to go for if you're going for background artist are you going for a character artist you're going for a color or whatever storyboard artist there are requirements there are the fundamentals that are that are required for this field and and then of course japan this is another difference the japan's approach to each of these steps is totally different than the west if you're trying to work in japan when we look at your portfolio your portfolio should represent the work here not in the west so like if you give us a storyboard and it looks like a western storyboard so you don't understand like how to separate the cutting or you don't understand how to separate time um uh the timing or you don't understand like that actually is kind of a negative of course we know that we're going to train you but if if you're not checking off the boxes and there's a whole bunch of unchecked boxes then it kind of seems like okay i guess we're going to go to the next person so technical skills yeah uh, what you said is specifically uh what was a problem for me right when i came in mm-hmm. uh you've only worked in japan as you mentioned yeah. so you you kind of tailored your portfolio even from day one to the anime industry yeah. right mm-hmm. for me i had a ready to go portfolio from the west right mm-hmm. i had cartoon network stuff in there and yeah. you know uh western made pc games and things like that and when i showed that to the studio they said uh, well before i even say this the the if in the West I had Dragon Ball characters or Sailor Moon characters in my portfolio, yeah. those studios would have hated it. They would yeah. have been like, what is this, Henry? Like, you're drawing anime? Like, we're not yeah. an anime studio. We're a Cartoon Network studio. Like, what is happening, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was drilled into my mind. So I was like, okay, I'm going to you know, you know, yeah. tailor my portfolio to the West. Now, when I came out here, I was still in the mindset of, I bet they'll still be impressed, though, right? Mm-hmm. Because it, it's professional work, right? They'll be yeah. like, oh, this aired on TV in another country. That's still, he's a professional animator from another country. I'm sure mm-hmm. uh, that he'll get along with us, right, is yeah. what I was thinking. But when I showed them that, they said, why are you showing me this? Yeah, what, yeah. what are these Cartoon Network shows? What yeah, is this? Yeah. I can't use this. So my first few interviews did not go well at all, yeah. to say the least. They were, they were like... I'm sorry, you've proven nothing, right? Mm-hmm. So I did have to redo my portfolio from scratch, adding the very things that the West didn't want to see at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. So if you so understand what it is you are applying for, uh, and then make sure your portfolio is good to go for that. And I would also say not just the portfolio, but understand what it is that you're getting into. So if you are applying as an in-between animator like I did to crack in, mm-hmm. understand what the work hours are, and understand yeah. what the work ethic is, and understand that you know the studios out here, even if you do everything right, you have your great portfolio, you got your correct visa, Mm -hmm. uh, you learn Japanese so you can interview in Japanese. When you get that job, you're going to go in a room that's very quiet and people are going to be working 12 hours a day. You will only (laughs) earn $20 for that whole day, even if you work really hard, right? Because that's like kind of the nature of Mm -hmm. particularly in between animators, right? Uh, At the beginning, at least. Um, And so uh, a lot of people get in, even Japanese uh, artists, they'll get in and then be like, oh my God, I can't believe this is what it is. And then they quit in three months, right? you know, you could have known that much information by research prior, right? Yeah, yeah. So understand what it is you're applying for and what you need for that position. Yeah. And then, and as I like, like, said, check off all the boxes. Said is like, you know, low pay. Like, the industry is starting to change now. Like, a lot of a lot of companies, ours being one of them, is trying to fix mm-hmm. the pay. So don't, don't get too discouraged about that. But like Henry said, definitely be aware of where you're going, what type of position you want to, you want to have. And what are the requirements? And also, just what what are the requirements, and what is the environment like? And then, but that that's technical ability, right? And um, so, yes, you have to have technical ability. And second, the and probably most important because in Japan, which is different than the West, Japan has multiple interviews, like three. So when I was uh, even to get into Ogura Koba, I had, I had three interviews, and. So, and what they're looking for then, of course, the first one is your technical ability, right? You submit your portfolio, what is this person, you know, what, are, what, is, what can you do, blah, 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 to ask you questions specific to your work. But then the, the next interview is not, not so much about your work, but more trying to understand your personality. And then that's when you, you, we mm-hmm. like would understand, okay, is this person fit for this type of work? You know, like, uh, like, you know, so for example, if they're like, okay, so what, how do you see yourself? One question that I like to ask is, um, okay, like, where do you see yourself in a few months? And, and then, you know, then based off of what they answer, oh, like, I mean, I, I, an ideal answer would be, I see myself like, um, you know, leveling up a little bit, still, still doing the same 
you know, position that I entered, but maybe being a little bit faster or something. That, that's a pretty good answer. It means that you're dedicated. But if you're like, oh man, I'm going to, I'm going to be like a key animator in one month and I'm going to like move on and like, I hope to work on this project from another studio. That's a bad answer. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, you know, because what we're looking for is dedication, right? Like as an artist and especially within this field, you're not going to be like, I know that a lot of people have like this, you know, over estimated like you know like an overestimation of their own position Abilities, and their yeah. ability but when you get into work like you can't think beyond that right at that moment like think about where you are at the moment that's what's important that what you're doing at that moment and what you're trying to do getting better there and then yeah like you know and then maybe one year later okay cool i want to i want to do this another question is like how do you spend your um you know when you're working like, what, how do you spend your free time? Like, what do, you, what do you think about these kind of hours, for example? And you're like, oh, okay, I want to go and, like, during my lunch break, you know, I'm going to go off and do something, and then maybe, like, my hours, I like I prefer to work, and, and <laughs> I don't know, in the evening, and I, I want to work only three hours and then come back or something. Like, you know, if you seem really flighty, right? And so... To, to bring this back to the, the Japanese anime industry, yeah. though, because, you know, as opposed to just a general work ethic discussion, in Japan, more so than even the West, they will notice things like that. So, so it, you know, everything we're talking about is actually all linked. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've talked about Japanese, we've talked about cultural differences, we've talked about work ethic. But, like, if, if you do blatantly Western things while living yeah. here and working here, uh, it will really stand out like a sore thumb. So, it, so no Japanese animator is going to go out and have a two-hour lunch, right? Yeah, yeah. So everyone is going to run to the convenience store. The, mm -hmm. the kombini food in Japan is very yeah. good, by the way, actually. Really <laughs> but but th they'll come right back. They'll eat it, maybe listen to something from YouTube for 15 minutes, but then get back to work, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, n that's not to say you have to do that. That's It's not 100% required. But um, understand if you are taking your hour, two-hour lunch break, then uh, it it will stand out. So just just understand that you know this is really a different industry. Um, mm -hmm. And but but let's actually highlight some of the positives uh, mm -hmm. because so far you know we've given partially the harsh truth. Yeah, yeah, the harsh oh, only truth. only a part of it to be honest. It, it goes deeper. Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> but well, but so why put up with all this stuff? What what is great about it? What do you love about it? Yeah. So obviously some of the things that we love is that you get to work on just amazing productions, right? Like there's um, all, all the products that, all, all the products, all the all the productions that you would have liked when you were growing up, like if you like Dragon Ball, if you like One Piece or something, you have the ability to do that, you know, work on those things because you really like them. And so that's, of course, fun. And like the, the, you do have, as an artist, I feel a little bit freer because of the, uh, the amount of that you can experience as an artist. I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm saying that the correct way, but like you're pushed more here. And so you do, at least within animation and 2D animation in Japan, obviously there's, it depends on what your field is, but even think about the 3D games and things like that come out of Japan, Square Enix and stuff, like the games are just out there, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you're really kind of pushed to, to develop like this really creative side that you would think you almost aren't. You're at you least are. pushed to a different limit than you are in the West, right? Yeah. Uh, in the West, they might push other limits, I know for animation, there's probably more frames, so you have to in between more things, yeah, yeah. and it becomes smoother. But you're pushed to a much different, uh, in a different direction. Like uh, here, uh, one thing I love about Japanese animation, and I know it's the same for you, uh, the variety yeah. of of all the stories told and everything, mm -hmm. and the age groups that can enjoy it. Uh, yeah. It's not something that's just for kids or for teens, right? It's not something just for late night, you know, <laughs> uh, for some comedy, um, which isn't bad by the way like i said i, I participated yeah. in those things and they're, and they're fun to make but here you know there might be a film that's rated r mm -hmm. or a television series that deals with some really deep you know drama right mm -hmm. uh, a relationship drama among characters yeah. uh, really deep things that don't suddenly jump over to comedy and, and, and kitty stuff at any point mm -hmm. and so the the kind of depth of the stories told is is impressive right yeah. <laughs> There's our, our phone, it's ringing. We're always working here. Yeah, We're yeah. always working. Um, so, uh, so yeah, for me... Um, <laughs> So for uh, for me, uh, yeah, same thing as Arthel, you know, to get to work on the kind of projects that you've always dreamed to work on. Um, 
I, I mentioned that I loved all those OVAs and stuff that I could rent at Blockbuster Video. Nothing like that was ever produced in America at mm -hmm. all, hands down. I'd never have the opportunity to make that. But since coming here to Japan, working really hard, I've worked on Gundam series. I've worked on uh, Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, I've worked on Attack on Titan. All of those things fall exactly into the category of kind of the, the those videos that I used to watch yeah. in the past. So to actually get to work on very specifically the types of things that I always wanted to work on, unbelievable. Words yeah. can't really describe the, the honor of, of getting to work on that. Yeah, and I guess just to kind of follow it after what Henry was saying, same here, obviously I came in as a background painter, and one of the really specific reasons why I came to Japan was actually because this was one of the only other countries that was still painting by hand and on paper. Now obviously the industry has totally changed and there's not too many uh, traditional painting studios, but at the time there was. And and then our approach here even now, even though we are a digital studio, is still using the same thinking process and methods. And so I really appreciate that about being out here is that even though it's a digital, even though the the, the field has become digital, what you see still does very much so look like 2D animation. And I really like that. Yeah, and that's something that's amazing. Let me also mention uh, our own productions, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Arthel and I uh, cracked into the industry. A, a lot of you artists are probably interested in hearing about that aspect of, uh, of you know, I worked on Attack on Titan, things like that. But, you know, recently uh, we started up this studio, De mm -hmm. Stagio, and so now, uh, generally speaking, the two of us are kind of uh, leading productions right mm -hmm. and so that's like the next step in our careers and, yeah. and that's been uh, a, f a really fun roller coaster yeah, ride yeah. in itself so um Sturgill Simpson Sound and Fury is mm -hmm. a Netflix special that uh, went up uh, a, a little while back mm -hmm. last year um you know we produced uh, from scratch two of the two of the sequences mm -hmm. uh, of that film um Indigo Ignited pilot film, uh, various music videos, um, and so we're always pushing ourselves. and And I feel like, I feel like I'd never have the opportunity to make those things I just mentioned had I always stayed in America, right? Because the industry is just so different. I would have had different opportunities, but those types of projects I don't think would have been available to me, mm -hmm. to us. Yeah, you know? yeah, and I think that's a good point to end this. And so thank you all for checking us out. We're going to answer some questions in a bit. Yep. Um, so, so stick around for a Q&A later. Thanks, guys. Peace. All right. Hello. Welcome back to uh, De Arstagia. Yeah. Yep. So I'm Henry, I'm, I'm Henry Thurlow, the director here. and Arthur Isom. All right, so uh, Q and A portion of this thing. Yeah, so we had uh, asked, you know, we advertised to get some questions, and so now we're just going to be checking. We're going to be answering the questions that everyone delivered to us over the social media, and so our first question is from uh, at Nat Nataki <laughs> via Instagram. You know, everybody's got these colorful names, man. <laughs> at Nat Nataki asks, "What is it like to start a company in a field that traditionally?" has only one culture right so in like a, a, um, a homogenous area like how what does it feel like to start a company there um, well Arthel is the CEO so he's going to pretty much be the one to answer this question okay. but but I but afterwards I, I have a couple comments go, all right go for it well yeah so kind of like what we said in, in the previous in the previous segment where we came out here so long ago right so now going on 15 my 15th year at that time, I really felt it. Like, it was like, wow, this, this country. Like, you know, I was the only uh, foreigner in, uh, in the school that I was going to, especially the only black foreigner, or the only black person, the only black thing, right? <laughs> so, like, and then now we're in the animation industry, even when I worked out with Kobo, once again, the only, the only American, and, of course, in the whole anime industry, probably the only black person in the whole industry here. And so, like, I really, really stood out, you know, like, no matter where I went. Like, you know, if we have a party or something, and it was like, as soon as I walked in the room, all, all the heads instantly turned. It was like, there's a security guard coming inside here, right? Like, so it was, it, I always felt like I had to try to blend in and try not to stand out, which is kind of difficult, you know? So I would, I would kind of shrink myself to try to really, you know... So I think that, that was what I felt the most about it. It wasn't... Because there was no, like... 
like you would think that like I was like oh man there was nothing but hate all around but it wasn't like there was none of that I didn't feel any of that like I felt like so much appreciation even just for our, my culture and who I am as a person and even for our company now like we get a lot of appreciation from the other studios and like they're just like oh cool we want to work with you guys and so that that was that was always there I felt like that um so it wasn't that I, I the pressure was actually something that was exerted for myself and perhaps Henry feels the same and even now we feel the same way for our company that we're out here and we don't want to rock the boat in like the wrong way you know and so I, I always felt like I want to really do what everyone else is doing like we talked about how like the, the art and everything is different so it's like if we're here and we have this western way of drawing in this western way like that's obviously going to stand out or you're not going to be allowed to stay in this industry long so that was that type of pressure was always on me where it's like okay how do I fit in how do I draw like and paint like everybody else how do I how do I uh, speak like everybody else? And how do I just act like everybody else? And now with our company here, how does our company fit in so that it truly is an anime company? And so that it's not like this thing that just stands out and people are like, oh, there's that studio there. So I think that's how it, that's that's the way this kind of affects me, I think, I don't know. Uh, well, one thing before I go into this question, just to address that you said, because mm -hmm. um, I know how you meant it, but I just want to make sure everyone else knows, mm -hmm. by we don't want to rock the boat, Personally, in terms of our storytelling and in terms of right. original ideas and stuff, I think we really do want to rock the boat. Oh, in yeah, yeah. Ways. So that, that's the, the, yeah. the way we don't want to rock the boat, um, mm -hmm. and we just don't because we, we you know, worked hard to get yeah. to this point in the industry, is we don't want to... Uh, not do things the way they do them here. Yeah. You know, like like, like when, when uh, we work with other companies on, you know, their productions... Uh, you know, chances are we are the only foreigners or uh, Westerners at the very least probably working on that production or on that episode. And, um, you know, when they see our work, we don't want them to see, oh, here's the foreigners with the thing that doesn't really match everything yeah. else, right? When they get our work, they, we want them to feel whoa, like, yeah. this is this is top A-plus Japanese anime work that's yeah, being yeah, handed yeah, yeah. in here. Um, so in that in that sense, we want to make sure that, you know, we have skills and, and, and what we deliver is uh, top-notch uh, via the, uh, or based on the, the, the quality lines that mm -hmm. exist here in Japan. So we yeah. hold ourselves to that standard, right? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, how does it feel to, yeah, uh, you know, work in, in a culture where, you know, generally it's, it's all just, you know, one, one group of people. Um, similarly to Arthel, I really never felt it was a thing. If anything, I, I, I feel like I got smiles. Like, yeah. oh, wow, there's, a, there's an actual foreigner in the room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, y you know, um, uh, similarly to Arthel, we worked at different companies up until we made this studio. So when I went to my completion parties, Generally speaking, with like maybe one exception, uh, mm -hmm. there was like an international sales person or uh, something yeah. at one or two of them. Yeah. But generally speaking, when I went to the completion parties of different anime, yeah, it's just a sea of, of Japanese people mm -hmm. with a couple peppered Korean people. Yeah. And then, and then you know, White Henry just standing there and, and people walking up like, oh, wow, do you speak English? You know? yeah, but, yeah. but it was never, it was never, uh, there was never, it was never in a negative context. Yeah. It was like, oh, wow, what, what part did you play in this anime? I didn't expect that yeah. there would be an American standing in the middle of the room here, yeah, but this yeah, is yeah. interesting. Tell me more about yourself. So yeah. I, I, I found the reception quite good, to be honest. But you need to, as we discussed in the previous segment, you need to do your homework to make sure that, you know, when you're standing in that room, uh, you can speak the language and, mm -hmm. and you put in the hard work to have the right type of yeah. portfolio. Because you, you don't want to be standing there and then not be able to communicate. <laughs> yeah, and that, and that probably is why it was really easy for us to kind of just really kind of immerse ourselves because yeah. obviously both of us can speak Japanese and yeah. we understood the culture. So even when we were at these parties and we we're at work, it, it didn't feel different because all of our senpai and like, and obviously we were here so long, so even at that time we had a few kohai, like, you know, they would just talk to us, right? It was just like, you know, so it, it's, I don't know, it just felt, yeah, felt good. But great, great question, not to not, not to... <laughs> Not Nataki, thank you very much for that question. And our next question. Next question uh, from at Small Cravette via Twitter. Um, what specific moment in your lives made you guys decide to 
uh, go all in and do animation for a living. Um, that's interesting because it doesn't say animation in Japan for a living, just animation yeah. in general. Yeah. Like, well, like, I guess when did you know animation was the field that you wanted to mm. get into in art via other fields? Yeah. Um, for me, uh, it, I mentioned it in the previous segment, it was that Spawn, uh, mm. HBO Spawn TV series. Um, all through elementary school, um, I always had a sketchbook and was drawing, uh, but well, since forever I had that, right? Yeah. Um, so I knew I liked art, but I didn't know like what kind of art do I really want to do. I always knew I even wanted to be an artist. It, it, they asked me in first grade, I think, as just like a, you know, a, a, a general exercise, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you want to do when you're an yeah. adult? But even at that point, <laughs> I was like, I'm an artist, and then it never yeah. changed, right? <laughs> uh, but I didn't answer in first grade. I want to work at an animation studio. Yeah. Um, I, I knew I liked drawing. Uh, but how I want to use it, I don't know. And then I saw, you know, not just Spawn though. And then I, and then I started renting anime from from the the video store. And I was like, you know, I've seen comic books, I've seen paintings in museums. I like all that stuff. But there's something about this that is just like the most amazing form of entertainment that exists on the planet Earth. That's how I felt when watching really exciting animation when I was younger. And so once that bug kind of bit me of like how how interested I was in animation and, and how it could make me feel uh, I, I just stuck with it I, at that point I was like I, I think this is the kind of art I want to be making because nothing makes me feel the way this makes me feel so yeah th this is what I want to make mm -hmm. yeah and kind of similar I think Harry and I are both similar there where from a very young age we kind of knew what we wanted like I from from as early as I can remember and then as as early as my parents can remember and they've told me so I you know I've been drawing ever since I was two years old like just drawing on everything and um, yeah through elementary school I've been you know entering competitions and um, winning some competitions yeah good me <laughs> elementary school art pro <laughs> but you know and so like I was just always drawing right for forever and I like and luckily like I kind of had my twin brother um, Darnell and so we were both, he was also from a very young age, so I'm also two years old as well, drawing. And so we kind of like would just go off of each other, just drawing everything. We And I remember we had like uh, sketchbooks that we would, or it wasn't a sketchbook, we couldn't afford a sketchbook, but we, we had like loose paper that we stuck inside of a binder. And, and it was a really big binder. And then he would draw something, I would draw something, and we would create stories based off of that. And then that, that was like my earliest thing. So it wasn't animation. I think at that time it was like, Oh, let's let's make like we we always wanted to make stories, and we always that was just our thing, and so we would make these. I guess maybe then it would be more similar to like a comic book or something. We would just throw it in there, and then um, we lost that binder, man. So if maybe someone finds it, you know, <laughs> that but, thing's gone. Dude. Yeah, it's so <laughs> gone. Like we, we we went to like church somewhere, and then like we left it at the church, and we never got it back. <laughs> so I don't know, but like then I was really young. But then animation to to get back into animation, like. How do we, how did I know that this is what I want to do? I actually didn't really know. Like I knew that I went I went to an animation school, college, university, and I knew that I wanted to be in the animation field, but I didn't know that I wanted to be a background painter yet. And so I, um, from watching the animated videos, kind of, or for watching anime, and then watching Ghost in the Shell, that kind of really pushed me into this direction because I I kind of unlike Henry, I'm actually not. <laughs> and it's this anime expo and so I always feel weird when I say this but like I wasn't an anime fan right like and I'm, I wasn't like that wasn't my thing I just really like art in general and so I probably it's weird because if I didn't watch Ghost in the Shell I'd probably be working somewhere else like I when I was in and I don't mean like in a different field I mean I would just be in a different art field so when I was in college I painted murals and then uh then I came out here and so it was like I I just really 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 like art and and I love painting and that was kind of what also helped solidify that I, I definitely needed to be here because I can paint here. And so, yeah, but that's that. Next question. Uh, what does an average work day look like for you? Yeah, and that's from at Busted Mountain via Twitter. And so um, an average work day, uh, it's like for, for me, it's kind of simple. Like, you know, I, I get it. <laughs> For you, it's simple. It's, it's just a 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah There's exactly. no such thing as the end of a work day. <laughs> yeah, for me, yeah. I'm like, my work day starts on Sunday, and then it usually ends on... It hasn't ended yet. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's like usually going. Thursday, like Thursday or Friday morning is maybe when I can get home, maybe for, you know, something like that. Th th this one's hard. Uh, you know, l l l I'll, we, I think we can make this one short, because uh, it... 
It really depends on the person. It depends on your skill level. It depends on your position also a bit. And it depends on the company as well. I know Studio uh, Ghibli had different rules than yeah. other studios, et cetera, et cetera. And we have different rules than other studios too, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, generally speaking, though, because I know what they want. They want to hear, oh, the anime artists work so long. Generally speaking, uh, in between animators, I'll speak as an animator, in between animators in particularly... Uh, yeah, it's morning until night, 12 hour plus work days at most studios, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it, it does act, if you stick with it and you mm -hmm. go up, it, you know, in, in the different positions in mm -hmm. the industry, it can change. Now, there are still animation directors and key animators that also work just crazy hours 24-7, but um, y you can have a little bit more leniency the longer you're in the industry, I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. can take on a different amount of sequences yeah. and different responsibilities. And of course, it's like you're naturally just going to get faster. Yeah, right? yeah. Because the, um, the, the difference with that is that, like, especially Japan, because they are very traditionally based, like you're kind of that that process is what takes long just kind of drawing yeah. because you're not like copy pasting so you know most stuff. of the time uh it, it's not about it's not about bosses coming in and yeah. being like you are to work 16 hours today mm. it might be that you come in in the morning and look you can leave after eight hours it's totally mm. fine you just have to get done with what you need to get done with yeah. but you look at your sequence and you're like uh, if I'm going to make this sequence look as good as I want it to look, mm -hmm. it's going to take me 16 hours, right? Yeah. And it has to be handed in today. That's the deadline. Yeah. So y y most of the artists do it to themselves to to an extent because yeah. they really want to make the sequence They're just look that themselves. good. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. most, most studios have really lenient schedules, even hours. Like you can come, everyone. There is no schedule schedule here. Everybody comes in whenever they want. Stuff right? just needs to get done yeah. by due date. Yeah, so yeah, it is your responsibility. Dates, yes. It's a rotating schedule but great great question mm -hmm. um, Busted Mountain so next is at the Rose Gall via Twitter um, they ask which animation would you dream of being able to make uh, I guess for me like I don't, I don't know if your question means like for an animation out that exists and I want to make that or if there's a comic because I don't have one of those things but I, what I do have and which is kind of a dream for our company is to just make an original and we have quite a few originals that we want to make and um so that that's the dream the the list of anime that i was like you know just a huge fan of that i wanted to be a part of generally speaking i've actually gotten to work on them so attack on titan one piece um tokyo ghoul i was like fans of that and then yeah. that, and then i worked on it <laughs> so, uh, yeah. but but the at the end of the day like arthel the real dream is like like we make our own film yeah. and that film is like a, a, a you know in the future you'll be asking other people, you know, like, man, wouldn't it be awesome to get involved in, like, a day art production? They make such amazing yeah, original yeah. films. That that would be really yeah, awesome that's, that's to the be goal. able to do that. Yeah, and then I... So Henry had a list of animations that he... Um, well, can you just run off, like, a few that you wanted to... That was your dream to work on? That you JoJo's on? Bizarre Adventure, Attack on Titan, One Piece. Uh, I was big yeah. fans of those. And then, uh, Naruto worked yeah. on that one. Yeah. And I think... So Henry had a list, and I actually didn't have a list of animations that I wanted to work on, but I did have a list of a person that I wanted to work for in the animation industry. And that, I said, um, is Hiromasa Ogura-san. He was the art director of Ghost in the Shell. I didn't actually care about the title itself. I just wanted to work under... I, mean, I just wanted to work for him and learn from him. And that dream, of course, came true. All right. Next question. Uh, DJ Kenna444 via Instagram. Um, what's the vision and mission for your company? How does representation fit into this vision? What's the takeaway you want for your viewers? There's a lot of questions. Right? Yeah. And plus I ask one question. <laughs> you got like three. You like snuck in three plus questions. Plus we, we don't have we don't have all the time in the world, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's see, let's see. Uh, okay, so generally, what's the vision? generally speaking, what, vision what, what, and mission. Yeah. Uh, which we'll try to in representation. So of course like in for our company, like we've always said, um, diversity in art. And that's like not something that um, we just kinda of throw around lightly. Like even just being if you come to our studio or you visit us so you see us like I think we've put up a vlog and things like everyone in our company works from, they're from everywhere, right? From yeah. all different countries, um, both men and women, all different positions, like, you know. The, all, the, yeah. the main language of the studio is Japanese that we have all the meetings in, but that being said, you'll hear lots of languages. Yeah, you know? all different languages speaking when people just throughout the day. Like um, for us, diversity and just representation, um, if we speak specifically about, um, because obviously there is, 
uh, it's not really elephant in the room. Like we all know that there's not that many minorities represented in, in anime culture and animation in general, even in Western culture. Like there's no like minority, there's not a lot of minority characters. And that is really important to us. And like, you know, and I don't even know if it was like something that we decided to, it wasn't like we went out of our way. It was like, hey, we need to draw a black guy. But that's like, interesting. It, yeah. It's totally not us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, but, that, but, but that comes naturally to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that's the thing, because like we don't go out of our way to push color into a character. Like, we're just more like, we just, we're just like, oh, cool, this would be a cool looking character. Or this is this is the kind of story we want to tell right now. And, this, and then, you know, they just happen to be characters from all over. Like, we just recently did a spot for, um, for Toon Boom. They, they had their release recently. And we just wanted to tell, we wanted to make a character who was a transgender character because we just thought that, that, that I don't know, it, was, it wasn't even like, oh, this needs representation right now. We just thought, oh, this would be a cool, this theme, like be what you, be anything that you, or be your true self. Like what a great theme. And then this, this character will represent that the best. And so that was what we drew. We just, and like, I don't know, I guess now that's like, one of the characters, like transgender characters. So. I, I think the best way I could put it is uh, like what our mission is and like what you can maybe expect from the future. Mm -hmm. um, expect lots of diversity and lots of representation, but very little or rather zero mm -hmm. pandering. No yeah, exactly. pandering. Yeah, no, not... no, isn't this lovely, you know, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. like multiracial characters putting their arms around each other's shoulders and pan up into the sunset. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not interested in pandering and it's like, oh, this will make people happy. But we just genuinely want to make stuff that looks yeah. different and feels different and is from a different perspective yeah. that uh, from stories other people are telling. Yeah, and we definitely want to show, like, we, we want those characters to represent what they, like, who they're supposed to represent. And as, as for the industry as general, in general, like, yeah, we're always trying to work with all artists from, like, the artists that, you, from the underrepresented to the represented, like, you know, none of that matters of course like we we but we do obviously reach out to artists who are um you know just to put more of us in to work right so that's actually super important and i'm glad you said that because that, that that really needs to just be mentioned really quick you know um uh, I, I don't know the exact specifics of every single project that we do from here on out. There might be commercials that require only one or two characters, and, mm -hmm. and there won't be you know racial diversity in that one, because that's just not what the one commercial demands, let's yeah, say. Yeah. However, when people talk about representation and diversity, they almost exclusive, well, not always, but they often talk about just what's on the screen yeah, yeah. and not the staff behind the scenes. Exactly. So what, what I, I cannot guarantee you what exactly w w will be the main, the, the set of main characters mm -hmm. in every single thing we ever make. Yeah. But I will say behind the scenes, there will be massive diversity, uh, mm -hmm inputting into that project yeah and that, and that is even more important to us because that i think also matters right because you get those voices and and th that can't you know there's nothing you can do to replace that and so yeah just the amount of people behind it like women and everything through but let's get to the next yeah, one. yeah you gotta, speed, gotta, up, get, gotta yeah, speed up gotta speed up uh oh, go ahead okay next one um, but great great question yeah, yeah very good question. Four, four. um next one is uh, from team god at team god punch um via twitter uh, which or what projects was or were your favorite to work on either as a team or individually? Uh, for me personally, uh, I'll, I'll, I gotta say, I guess the Sturgill Simpson Sound and Fury uh, that we've done. Um, so far, that is the one uh, production that I feel our studio and us as individuals both um, really got to grab hold of a project and yeah, take control yeah. of it. Uh, you know, uh, we produced so many things that were so fun to make, uh, and, and even the anime that I love, like uh, One Piece would have been another example, just because I'm such a diehard fan of One Piece. Oh, I can't believe I got to work on that. It's a dream come true. That's true, but at the end of the day, you know, I didn't get to totally write and direct the episode of One Piece, right? Yeah, yeah. But I did for that Sturgill Simpson project, mm -hmm. so the opportunity to really just get in there and, and get to make something from scratch, like that that's such a great opportunity as an artist and so for me that would be it and then for me um so i don't want you guys to take this answer the wrong way and i know harry always gets on me about this because uh -oh. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> here we go <laughs> here we go here we go but i so i don't have a favorite yet you know and and so my goal is to hopefully make something that is my favorite um i, I kind of don't view things that way because i'm always looking forward and like trying to you know make 
It's, oh, it's so positive. It's what a gorgeous positive. It's, I don't look behind. I, I, look, look, forward. Behind, I look forward. The yeah. better days are ahead. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's all you're such like, a beautiful dreamer. Yeah, no, well, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's I am mean, just kind of, and even for the staff, I'm really just hard on everybody with that. Like, you know, it's always about the next production. What are we doing to improve the things that we made? And then how can we make the next project better? How can we make the next project better? And so, like, you know, um, I don't know. So I don't know what my, like, I'm hoping to get to something where I'm like, that is our favorite. But that's that. Thank you for the question. All right. Uh, next question. At Jack Corrente, yeah, Jack Corrente via yeah. Instagram. Do you think it's important that someone has uh, experience in the animation industry in their own country before trying to work abroad? If so, how much? Uh, and to be honest, I think we already almost answered that. Yeah. Uh, Arthel uh, and our character designer also, uh, ha while Americans mm -hmm. have had no... Yeah, we've had no experience in this. So. <laughs> so, so apparently, you know, apparently yeah, that yeah. just answers your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, uh, for me, for me, um, well... So at the end of the day, no, it's not important. Um, but let me answer it in a slightly different way. You know, I get a lot of emails from people saying, like, I want to work on anime, right? Uh, how do I work on anime? Um, but if you are currently not planning on moving to Japan, if you are not currently, if you don't know any Japanese, you have, like, like you want to work on anime, but realistically you don't want to work in Japan and go through the whole visa process and what whatever like that, then I would say first step for you in that case would be how about you become a professional artist in the field that you want to enter in your own country. Yeah. Do that now and have an experience of working professionally as that in that profession. And then if, if after a few years and, and after you've become more professional right, and have a good uh, portfolio, if that is still lingering in your mind, I really want to work on anime, well... Th then you can you know go on to the next steps. So it might not be a bad it, it, uh, idea to actually work in your country if that fits best for you. And it did for me. For me, I think it's a good thing that I worked in New York for a few years actually mm -hmm. before coming out here. Yeah, because I think I think the thing is that, that just really quickly is that you don't necessarily have to work in your country if you want to work somewhere else. But if you're but you need to actually be able to then work in that other country. So, because the reason is you need the experience, right? So no country is going to train you. So you you do need to have some experience, especially if you're trying to work in another country, because they already have artists in that country. There's already, there's already a span of artists that we have access to. So if you hope to get to work with these companies and you don't have experience, then you know, when, when we give you work, like we're going to expect you to do it at a professional level. So you definitely need to work in your country and your field. Like there is no way to not be a professional and then work overseas. Because when, art, when you're hiring artists from overseas, you're expecting them to, to operate on a certain level. So uh, definitely work in your country. And then, but if you can get to another country and then work there, then that's a different story, right? Because you can come here, you can learn and then be, you know, start start there so. <clears throat> next one okay next question but great question to uh next question uh um at cinema at cin oh, at cinnamon rolls with an s um via twitter what inspired you to get started and any obstacles you had to over and were there any obstacles that you had to overcome I think we kind of already touched on this one too. Uh, the different things that inspired us to come over were Ghost in the Shell for you and for me, uh, various anime OVAs and the Swan series. Um, it, that got us all started on the art career and obstacles, many, yeah. many, many, many. So, so uh, many. Yeah. One way that uh, one way that our I think Arthel described it this way to begin with, but I liked it so much that I adopted it. Now yeah, I use so it. Yeah, is, is, <laughs> is like is, so now when people give me advice, is like when you have a goal. Think of every single obstacle that is standing in your path between you right now and that goal. And literally, you can write it down or have it in your head as a checklist, right? And, and to get there, you just need to check all of them off. Mm -hmm. it, it's actually very easy, but individual things on that checklist might be very difficult. Yeah. So if it's be an artist 
in your own town, mm -hmm. your list is going to be this long. And that's not to say it's easy or mm -hmm. hard. It just, it, it is. That's just but thing. if your goal is like us, go to the other side of the world and then work in this industry that generally doesn't accept foreigners so yeah. much, uh, your list is going to be much larger. Larger, And included in that list are going to be unart related things, such as learn a different language, yeah, yeah. obtain the correct visa, etc. But if you just check all of them off one day, you will get through it, and then there will be no more steps, and that yeah. will mean you accomplish you it at that you moment. You achieve yeah. what you had set out to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's a great that's that's my answer. So it's a, <laughs> it's a great answer. <laughs> so, okay, but great great question, um, Cinnamon Rose. And then uh, next next one is uh, Auspex Zina. I'm sure I yeah. pronounce that right, via Twitter. Uh, what are some of you guys' favorite animes? Who inspired you uh, to want to animate in the first place? Um, he's not even going to have an answer because he's only a fan of Ghost in the Shell. I'll uh, kick it over to you next in case you yeah, yeah. think about an answer as I'm answering. But for me, um, for me, uh, aside from the ones I already mentioned, um, Kazuki Akane, uh, uh, he... Um, He's a director, anime director, and he made like uh, Escaflone, uh, Heat Guy J, Birdie the Mighty, uh, TV series, um, Noin. Uh, and though I really love all of his series. Um, like every time I saw one of his series, I was like, I got reinvigorated through the years about how much I love anime. Um, Nobuteru Yuki uh, is an animation director, and he he's also uh, the guy behind Escaflone, mm -hmm. um, and Hikaije for that matter, but uh, a bunch of other stuff. Record of Lotus War, his art I just think is so beautiful. Um, th there's a lot of... Uh, what, Yoshiaki Kawajiri with Ninja Scroll um, and Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. Uh, I, I'm a big anime nerd, so I actually have a big long list. Yeah. But uh, it, all of the things I just mentioned, Satoshi Khan and all of his movies like Paprika, um, when I see those, I get reinvigorated and I'm like, oh my God, look at what this industry, what, what this art form has to offer. It's so amazing. Yeah. Cool. Great, great question. And we'll go to the next question. Okay, last question. Last, last question. question. Yeah, at Pretty Girl. Pretty Girl Josh uh, via Instagram. If you're not an artist but you write, can you still get into the anime industry? Right. Um, well, so I I would say um, if you, uh, to be quite honest, I would say uh, stop feeling like the anime industry is the thing you need to jump into because it seems like you are a writer with no connection to the anime industry, and so your writing can get picked up for lots of things, I think, right? And yeah. So be a little bit more open-minded uh, it, it would be my answer because, I mean, truth be told, uh, most anime that's produced by the Japanese studios out here are, are based on manga that already exist in Japan, and the originals that they make here are some staff within that animation company. Yeah. So I don't know how many uh, animation studios would be looking for pitches of writing from, from a foreign writer, to be honest. Um, but that is not to say that you cannot be a professional writer. <laughs> yeah. All right, I think that was a pretty good question. Uh, so thanks everyone um, for joining us here at the Anime Expo Light. Um, where this is uh, Henry. Henry Thurlow. Arthur Isom, please follow us on De Stagio on any of our social media. De Stagio and follow us individually as well. Thank you so much for joining. Peace.